So let's introduce the concept of heat. Heat. Uh, and of course, everyone has a kind of an everyday count, uh, intuitive sense of what heat is. But in physics, heat is energy that's transferred between two things at different temperatures. Heat is energy that's transferred between things at different temperatures. We know that if something is hotter than something else, it's probably going to transfer heat into it. Uh, so heat is energy that's transferred between things at different temperatures. The symbol for heat is Q. I think people usually use uppercase Q. Sometimes they might use lowercase Q. But anyway, heat is Q. That's going to be our uh, symbol for heat. Um, now remember, heat is an energy transfer. So what would be the units for heat? Um, now, what are the units for energy? That would be joules? Yay, yeah, okay, joules. joules. Now, newtons are force. Mm -hmm. Well, here we have energy again, so this unit would be joules. By the way, any time that you find that you've forgotten some units from earlier in the course, uh, that's something you should take seriously, because units are really an important key for uh, mastering the material in the course. So some, somewhere in your notes, you should just have a piece of paper with all the concepts and all the units. That's just something you just want to keep going over, over and over. Because obviously, units are not things that people learn automatically. The only way to learn the units is to keep constantly looking over those. But every time you um, go over some new concepts, you need to learn those units, and then you have to make sure you haven't forgotten the previous units. Okay, so uh, it really is a good idea just to have a piece of paper where you're keeping track of all the units from the course, and just, you just have to keep go going over that as often as necessary to make sure that we're not forgetting those units. Because units are so important, we don't want to have to look those up in a cheat sheet. We want to just have those in our head. All right, so the heat here is in joules. Um, by the way, uh, what were the units for temperature? Kelvin. All right, that gives us a very important point. Heat and temperature are different. A very common student mistake in physics is to think that the heat and the temperature are the same thing. Uh, because probably in ordinary English, oftentimes we use heat and temperature to mean the same thing. In ordinary English, we often do mean the same thing by heat and temperature, but not in physics. Heat uh, and temperature are very different things. They don't even have the same units. So we have to very, uh, be on our guard to make sure that we don't treat heat and temperature as the same thing. Uh, okay, so here we have the heat. Remember that the temperature tells you how quickly the molecules are moving. And the heat tells you how much energy you're transferring to something. So those are definitely different things. Uh, of course, if you do add heat to something, you would expect that to increase the temperature. But those are still different things. So let's say that we start with, say, some ice. Uh, and notice that this axis here is labeled Q. So as we move to the right here, we're adding heat to the ice. Well, what would happen to the ice as we add heat to it? Well, we would expect its temperature would go up. As you add heat to something, uh, you would expect its temperature would go up. So this curve over here represents, as we're adding heat, the temperature of the ice is increasing. Mm -hmm. All right, but we know that the ice won't keep on getting warmer forever. Instead, there's going to come a point where the ice starts melting. And we know what that point is. It's zero degrees Celsius. Eventually, there comes a point where the ice will start to melt at zero degrees Celsius. And as you add more heat, it's just going to make more of the ice melt. Now something interesting happens, while the ice is melting, its temperature doesn't change. While the ice is melting, its temperature doesn't change, so now the graph becomes flat. This is what's uh, the, the region where the ice is melting.
But eventually, we're going to get to the point where the ice starts, uh, where, where there is no ice, where it's all water. Eventually, we're going to get to the point where all the ice is melted and it's water. Well, at that point, if you add even more heat, now the water's temperature will start to go up. It'll go up. It doesn't go up indefinitely, though. It goes up until you get to 100 degrees Celsius. So in this region of the graph, we'd have liquid water. What, what do you think is going to happen to the graph at this point? Or what's going to happen to the water? It starts vaporizing. And while it's vaporizing, the temperature doesn't change. While the heat is vaporizing it, the temperature is not changing. But eventually, you're going to get to the point where there's no water left. All you have is water vapor. Eventually, you get to the point where you just have gaseous water. Well, what's going to happen then? Well, then the temperature is free to change again. And then, basically, the temperature can keep increasing indefinitely if you continue adding more heat. So notice every time we move to the right here, we're moving on the Q axis. So we're adding more heat. experiment in reverse. Suppose you take um, a gas that's at above 100 degrees Celsius and you start removing heat. Well, what happens to the gas when you remove the heat? Well, originally its temperature falls. But the temperature doesn't fall indefinitely. Eventually you get to 100 degrees Celsius. And then if you remove even more heat, it starts condensing. That's the word for turning from a gas to a liquid. That's actually a term that you probably need to, to know. Vaporizing is when you turn from a liquid to a gas, but condensing is when you turn from a gas to a liquid. You know that when people wake up in the morning and they find all this moisture on their car windows, they say that's from condensation. So that's because the water vapor in the air has turned into liquid. So we could move in this direction and we could condense all the water vapor into liquid. But what happens when it's all turned into liquid and there isn't any more gaseous water anymore? Well, if you continue to remove heat, now the liquid water will have a decrease in temperature. But its temperature won't decrease forever. When it gets down to zero, it'll start freezing. So this region could also represent freezing if we're moving from right to left. If you're moving from left to right, this region represents melting. But if you're moving from right to left, it represents freezing. What happens after all of the liquid water has frozen into ice? Well, if you continue to remove heat, then the temperature starts to decrease. And the temperature can basically keep decreasing forever. Notice that this is kind of a weird graph because zero is up here instead of down here. So I put zero up here, even though uh, so this is not the zero point for the way it normally would be on the graph. All right, I haven't really gotten the slopes or the lengths here accurate. Uh, I think this line should really be a lot longer than this line. Some of these slopes should be different. But that doesn't matter. We get the qualitative idea here, which is that there's upward sloping portions and flat portions. So it's important to have each of these portions labeled. In this region, the substance is existing as solid ice. Then in this region, it's either melting or freezing, depending on which direction we're moving. In this region, it's liquid. And here, it's vaporizing or condensing. And here, it's gas. I was talking about this for water, but this would be true for pretty much any substance. It doesn't have to be water. It could be pretty much any substance. Any substance could be in the gas phase, liquid phase, or ice phase. Of course, other substances wouldn't have the same melting and freezing points as water, but they would still have a similar graph. Now, one interesting thing here is, what happens when you add heat to something? Well, a naive person would say, if you add heat to something, it'll get hotter. If you add heat to something, the temperature will go up. But now we can see that's only sometimes true. If you add heat to the ice here, its temperature will go up. But if you add heat to ice when it's at zero degrees, its temperature doesn't change. Instead, its phase changes. That's a word we haven't used yet, phase. The phase tells you whether you're solid, liquid, or gas. The phase is whether you're solid, liquid, or gas.
Well, a naive person might think that anytime you add heat, that changes the temperature. But now we know, no, sometimes when you add heat, that changes the temperature, and sometimes when you add heat, it changes the phase, and it never does both at the same time. In this region, the heat is increasing the temperature, and in this region, the heat is changing the phase. Then in this region, any heat would change the temperature, but in this region, any heat would change the phase, and then in this region, again, we would change the temperature. So the heat will either go into changing the temperature or changing the phase, but never does both of them simultaneously. That's the significance of the fact that there's upward portions here and flat portions.